All right, so this is a similar question to what we are just from doing on question three. Except that here, we just need to simplify a few expressions in order for us to find the solutions. All right, so let us see how best we can solve this question. Okay. All right, so we continue. So the question is evaluate each of the following limits if they exist. So here on this question, um, limits are not always, uh, uh, yeah, limits do not always, okay, there are some limits that do not exist in short. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, so how can we solve such a question if you've been given? So if you, if, if for instance, like I said, this question was solving it in a similar way, but just from solving the other question, which is question three. So it's actually the same. Yeah, so uh, just that in this, uh, I mean, on this question, we just be required to think a bit. It's just, it, it's, it's not just a matter of re replacing the, the, assist, the number that you've been given in the function. No, we have to check and make sure that, yeah, we have to check and make sure that, um, the function is simplified even before we begin to uh, solve or begin to replace the numbers. All right, so the first question is uh, the limit of uh, t squared plus six over t squared minus three. And then as x is approaching, sorry, as t is approaching zero. So what we need to do with such a question so if you want, you can first distribute the limit, um, can distribute the limit uh, to all the terms in this function. I say the limit of t squared plus six, oh, sorry, plus the limit of six um, as t is approaching zero, as t is approaching zero, then you say the denominator, you do the same there. So we say the limit of t squared as T is approaching zero minus the limit of three as T is approaching zero. So when you replace the zero where there's T there, so as, when you put zero where there's T, so that's the same as having zero squared uh, plus the limit of a constant six, constant number six, when X or rather when T is approaching six, the answer is what? Oh, sorry, this is zero, not six. When t is approaching zero, the answer is that same constant. So meaning we have six there. Then you say over the limit of t squared, meaning you are replacing zero where there's t there. Then that will also be zero squared minus. Uh, the limit of this constant three, when t is approaching zero, is also just three. So we just simplify these expressions. I mean, these, these expressions. So we have zero squared, that will be zero plus six over zero squared, zero minus three. So zero plus six, the answer is six over zero minus three, the answer is negative three. So when you divide, you're getting negative two as the solution. So it's very simple. So something that you should even waste time on. Okay, so the other way to solve this question is simply, if you want, there are some markers that can mark you um, correct if you skip this part here. Some of them, they want you to show this part so that they know to say, okay, this person knows what um, they are doing. If you want, you can just move from this point, you just begin to replace the zeros where there is um, T there. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to do for these others so that we finish first. But the most important, um, but, but this part is one of the most, most important steps that you need to do. You simply distribute the limit this side to every term that you have in the function. Yeah, so it's very important. The reason as to why I'm going to be skipping this one is because there are functions that are complex like uh, part C. So I can't manage to write all the things that are in part C while dis uh, distributing this limit to each term there on this small board here. Yeah, so as a result, I'll just be replacing the numbers, the given numbers in the expression. Okay, so. Let us see what we can do for part B. 
So part B is asking us to find the limit of W plus two uh, over W squared uh, minus six W minus 16 as W is approaching negative two. So this one is uh, very straightforward. What you just need to do is to first test this, um, um, test the, the function if it's okay the way it is by replacing negative two in each term um, that you've been given in this function. So finding this limit as W approaches what? Negative two. So we said W plus two there, then down, we have W squared minus six W minus 16. So we just replace negative two others W there. So we have negative two plus two, everything over negative two squared minus six, negative two there, minus 16. So on top there, we, ha we have a zero. Then down here, we're going to have negative two squared. That will give us four. Negative two, uh, rather negative uh, six, and uh, negative two when you multiply them, we're getting positive what? 12, then we have negative six. So this will be zero over zero, and this will give us what? Undefined. So zero over zero is indeterminate. Yeah, you can't find the solution for this. You don't know if the answer is one. You don't know if it's undefined. You don't know if the answer is zero. So it's called, and if we, we say it has undeterminate uh, solution, indeterminate solution rather. Okay, so what do we do with such expressions? So we have to check if the denominator can be factorized. So let us see if it's possible for us to, to factorize W squared minus six W minus 16. If it's possible, then we should factorize it. So the product is negative 16 because we're multiplying the coefficient of W squared and negative 16. So one times negative 16, the product is negative 16. And then the sum is simply just the coefficient of W there. So negative um, six is the sum. Then let's find the factors, two numbers that we can multiply to get negative 16 and two numbers that, uh, the same two numbers, if we add them, they're supposed to give us negative six. So now how do you find this, uh, those two numbers? You simply just get the factors of negative 16. So we be, I, I believe that just by looking at this, we know that eight, or let me not say by looking at this, because there's some people who may not know how I got eight and uh, I mean negative eight and two to be the factors, because I found that the factors are negative eight and two. Now, how did I get these two factors? You simply just write your negative 16 there. Any two small numbers that we can multiply to get negative 16, we have negative one and 16 itself. This will give you negative 16 and uh, one times negative 16 will also give you negative 16. You also have two times um, negative eight. You also have negative two times eight. So all these numbers, you can continue writing these numbers, even four times negative four and negative four times four, you still get what? Negative 16. Now you have to uh, look at these numbers. You start adding them. So what there's times there, put addition. So when you say negative one and uh, and 16, when you add them, the answer will give you what? When you add this and negative one plus 16, the answer will be what? The answer will be 15. One time, one plus, um, one plus negative 16, the answer will be negative 15. Two plus negative eight, the answer will be negative six. Negative two plus eight, the answer will be six. So now you have to check the set of numbers that are going to give you what you have here as the sum. So here we have negative six and we have found that this set of numbers is giving us what? Negative six there. So this is the, um, I mean, these two numbers are the factors. This is why I said the factors are simply negative eight and what? Two. So we replace them where there's the sum there. So we have W squared, you can start with any of them. Yeah, so I'm going to start with positive two W and I'll write negative eight W as well. Okay, so we also have negative 16 there. So we, we factorize this. So factorizing this is simple. Find the common factor here. Common factor is W. 
then we when we factor when we factor out w from w squared we are having w there then we say plus factor out w from 2w we are going to remain with 2 then we have and then we say um we factorize these other two terms so negative 8 is common yeah so when you have a negative there you should always consider it to be common yeah so you have negative 8 is common and then you open brackets you're going to have w plus 2 as um part of that yeah so you have to check that what you have here and there are the same if they are different it means that you've made a mistake somewhere you have to check your work Okay, so let's finish the factorization. Okay. So it's as simple as this. So factorizing this, we're going to have W plus two as a common factor. And then we open brackets, we have W minus eight. So now, this is what we're going to replace on the denominator there. So the denominator can also be written as what? Uh, w plus two multiplying with W minus eight. And then the numerator there we have is W plus what? Plus two. So we have the numerator, which is W plus two. So now what do you do here? You cancel out this and that because they are the same. So you're going to remain with something like this as, yeah, you're going to remain with, uh, with something like this. You have one as a numerator, the denominator will be W minus eight. And then this is what we are going to use now to find the limit. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is the, the expression is like this. Let me just write these things step by step. So we, ha we, we have an equal sign there, then the division line there, we have the limit as X is approaching what? Oh, sorry, W is approaching negative two. So we also put the same thing here, the limit, as W is approaching negative two. So this is what we are going to plug. This is what we're going to use to plug in what? Negative two. Okay, so we just put negative two where there's W. So on top there, the limit of one when X, uh, when W is approaching negative two, the answer is one. Then the limit of W when W is approaching negative two is simply just found by replacing negative two where there's W. Sorry for that. Okay, we are replacing Oh, sorry, sorry. Everything has been erased by mistake. Okay, so I know where I ended. I had something like this, the limit of um, one over W. What was that? If anyone can remember. Is it minus eight, something like this, as X is approaching? negative two. Yeah, so I mistakenly erased everything. Okay, so on top there, I said the solution will be one. Down there, the, okay, let me say the limit as W is approaching negative two. Even down, we do the same. The limit of W as W is approaching negative two, then minus the limit of eight as W is approaching negative two. So this is what we have. So on top, the limit of the constant, which is one as W is approaching negative two is one. Down there, we have this part there, we just replace it with negative two. Yeah, so minus, uh, we have this part here, which is a constant as well, replacing it with, um, uh, oh, this is a constant, the limit of a constant when W is approaching any number is simply just that same constant. So we, we simplify this further. So on top of the numerator, we have one. Down, we have negative two minus eight, meaning the solution becomes negative one over 10. So this is our solution for the for part B. So we do the same even for, yeah, so we can do the same even for part uh, C. So the most important thing is just simplify, making sure that everything is in, everything is in, um, it's a simple form. Yeah, so, okay.
Okay, so yeah, like I said, the most important thing is uh, just, the most important thing here is just simplifying the expression. So as you can see, it's already counting down. So I'm going to solve part C in the next uh, session. Yeah, so let me end the meeting, then I'll start with part C. Yeah, I'll start solving um, from part C and then we finish the remaining questions. Okay. <clears throat>